The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN, 906 a.m. Wednesday morning. We have 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and we have markets in positive territory to kick things off right now, folks. We have the S&Ps up three points, quite an acceleration. We're getting into year's end. We got three more trading days right now, today, tomorrow, and a full day on Friday for New Year's Eve, December 31st, before we kick into 2022. Remarkable. Three trading days left, including today. We got the markets. We're going to be open right near record territory. You got a print yesterday at 47.98. Right now, we're positive by four points in the S&Ps. We had been marginally higher. You look at the overnight action, up to about 47.90. Your highs yesterday, right at the open, before a little bit of a sell-off. Got a little bit of a sell-off as well into the close yesterday. There's your red bar at 345, but all things considered pretty tame action sitting right near record territory. NASDAQ 100 gives off some of the points yesterday from 16,659 down to about 16,460. So you're talking about 200 points basically to the downside, and we were just down at that price level in the NASDAQ. You get the Dow right now with 24 points. You have the Russell up five points right now. Bitcoin, a little bit of negative action so far this week. We just caught a bid and amazing with the type of moves you get. I mean, this is a 15 minute chart. You were just at 46,550 within the last hour and you're up almost a thousand. But when you back things up, we were just at 52,200 on Monday within 48 hours. You're down to 46,000. That's a loss of more than 10% over about 48 hours for Bitcoin. You put it on a daily. We're right back to this level in Bitcoin, the cryptos that we had been in early December when you look at where we are. Now compare that to Ethereum. Ethereum, pretty similar action right now. You're down 1.6%, quite a slide for Ethereum. We put it on a 15 minute to see the action we had. Ethereum from 4160 down to 3692. So you give up about 4,600 percentage wise. You're talking about 11 or 12%, just like Bitcoin. For Ethereum, we jumped to gold. Gold with some negative action as well. 1821 yesterday to 1790. Now, interesting, I went from Bitcoin to Ethereum, to gold, pretty similar action over the last couple of days in terms of trading lower. 1821 to 19. 1790 down $30 over that time for gold and we jump to notes and bonds we're getting a little bit of negative price action let's put that on a 15 minute for a little bit more clarity let's put it back on a daily actually and we're looking at the 10 year right now negative six ticks at 13013 let's jump over to the VIX this market just goes one way right now folks and that's positive territory I kid somewhat we did have some negative action yesterday but man this VIX sitting just under 18 at 1754 but you put the VIX on a daily, and you're talking about talk about sucking out volatility from 2739. Eight days ago, we're sitting at 1753, and I imagine we come back down to about the 16 level, the historical average on the VIX as we kick into 2022. All right, jumping around to what we have going on, uh, we'll jump to crude. Crude is negative 33 cents right now at a handle of 75.65. There's your daily. Quite a rebound on crude. December 2nd, you're down at $62 and change. December 20th, you're at $66 and change. You see over the last, what's it been, five trading dates, you've accelerated from $66 up to a high yesterday of $76.92. We get back some of the gains. There's your five-minute action on crude. Monday, you really accelerate higher. Since Tuesday, just basically been shopping around between about $75.50 and $76 outside of that one acceleration. You did get higher. We're right in the middle of that range right now at $75.71. And I'm going to jump right to Facebook. So I was talking about Facebook. I got Oculus Rift over the Christmas holiday. Uh, pretty cool virtual reality headset. And it's interesting that more news is coming out even in light of what looks to be a pretty strong holiday season for Oculus, for Facebook, or Meta. Now, Monday this thing pops. There was an analyst note with the market accelerating higher throughout this whole time as well. So a lot of forces interacting on Facebook. 
But there was a note talking about, and I downloaded the Oculus app within the App Store for the iTunes App Store, uh, the Apple i Store, the Apple Store, maybe, um, App Store. And you can track how many people bought the Oculus because you can see where the Oculus app ranks on the store. Because when you download, when you install your Oculus, when you bring it up for the first time, one of the steps in setting it up is that you have to go download the app because it works in tune with pairing it with the app, with the system, the Oculus. Point being, they sold a lot of Oculuses over the holiday season. Now, what's interesting here is that this story is out. This, uh, nope, that's not the one yet. Let me get this. Here we go. So Apple aims to prevent defections to Meta with rare $180,000 bonuses for top talent. Tech rivals such as Meta have been luring away employees. Bonuses come in the form of stock grants that vest over four years. They're trying to keep them for four years. Uh, and almost throwing about two hundred grand in a bonus form to them. Uh, last company, the, last week, excuse me, the company informed some engineers in silicon design, hardware, and select software and operations groups of the out-of-the-cycle bonuses being issued as restricted stock units, according to people familiar, 50 grand up to 180 grand. Uh, many of the engineers received amounts of roughly 80, 100, excuse me, yeah, or $120,000 in shares. Now, Apple's waging a talent war with sil companies in Silicon Valley and beyond with Meta emerging as a particular threat. It's interesting, I started talking about this, right? Then it comes out, these two companies, I imagine, virtual reality, it's gonna be a big thing here. And using this headset for the first time and seeing it, you know, last night I was on there. So I'm on the Oculus and I have it here. All right. And I, you know, I can't stand the company Facebook. I think Facebook is horrible for you, which is a bummer that Meta owns this, but you can't control the fact. So this is the headset. We've all seen it. Right. You put it on your head and then you have a couple of handles for each hand that you hold. OK. And. What's so cool is that this one is, I believe, four hundred dollars, and it has two hundred and fifty-six megabytes. And then there's a three hundred dollar version for one hundred and twenty-eight megabytes. Now, what's so cool is that Apple, in reading this, they're waging the war with Meta. Okay, but here's a couple of links that, and it's interesting because Bloomberg emailed this out, and I get a bunch of emails from Bloomberg with a variety of different articles every morning that I'm reading. They put out a bunch of great stuff. And the technology part, okay, what they do is they have this article here that's talking about Apple. And then within that, they're linking to other articles that reference what they're talking about. And one of the articles they referenced to was the Apple's first headset to be a niche precursor to the eventual augmented reality glasses. So it goes beyond virtual reality, okay? It's gonna be augmented reality. And this article is from January of this year, so you're going back, but it talks about that I believe it's sometime next year that they are going to be coming out with their first product. And what they talk about here is that they're going to go a completely different route. And to scroll down to the numbers they're talking about here, Apple plans that uh, their first headset is going to be far more expensive than those from the rivals, which are 300 to 900, o Oculus in there. Some Apple insiders believe the company may sell only one headset per day per retail store. That's about 180,000 units. That would put it on par with the Mac Pro desktop, the top of the line products at about 6K. Uh, and you can see, we're going to talk a little bit more about this. Facebook's going to have a Cambria headset coming out. Uh, pretty cool implications. We'll talk about a little bit more. We'll be right back, folks. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. 
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up four points right now. You get the NASDAQ 100 up 21. All the markets in the green with the Dow up 33 right now. We got to try to Facebook up there. Facebook up about 40 percent, 40 cents, excuse me, not 40 percent overnight. You had Facebook spike into 352 on the open yesterday. Gives it back pretty quick to actually finish, uh, I believe, negative on the day yesterday or pretty close. I guess technically maybe positive on the day, but you get back about four dollars and change. Now, jump it back to what I was talking about, because it's interesting to wrap your head around the fundamental way this can change the way you look at everything. And so I, I talked about the headset. And so last night I look up YouTube, YouTube VR. Okay. So you go to YouTube and you can be fully immersed in just a, a trip over, let's just say Rome, uh, Venice, Italy, Europe, London, uh, New York, Chicago. You want to visit Tampa, beautiful St. Petersburg. Now, all these videos aren't out there, but there are many out there. And the key was I was finding out is that there are 360 degree videos. So you're fully immersed and they're in 8K, 8K, 360 degree videos. And so you're looking around and you feel like you're fully immersed in this environment. And it's an amazing way to witness the world. Uh, and I know I'm just like talking about this cool thing, but it's interesting how these two companies are going to begin to battle and that the technology is getting to that point. So what I found myself doing last night um, is looking at what these cameras even cost to produce such amazing virtual reality, 360 degree 8K technology. And of course, you know, when you're talking about professional cameras, you're talking about 25 to 50 grand easy for this type of technology. But the cool part about it is that if you don't need 8K, which many times you don't, but this one does. I didn't even realize that there's 360 degree cameras out there, one of which is the GoPro, and I don't own a GoPro at all, and I don't think I'm gonna buy that one, but for about 400, 500 bucks, you buy a 360 degree camera, and then you have that 360 degree ex experience. So here's where it goes, though. I was walking through last night, imagine that the new standard, okay, is going to become recording things in 360 degree, high quality, maybe 8K technology or even greater. Because imagine you're, uh, you have a wedding coming up. You can record that event or any event, family parties, birthdays, okay? Even um, a vacation, a travel spot, you record a, um, yourself walking around um, 
some type of maybe maybe Faneuil Hall, you set it up an outdoor environment. Okay, but let's go back to the wedding. You record your wedding in 360 degree 8K or even higher technology that I'm sure is coming down the pipeline. And then you have an experience within your virtual reality headset that at any point in time, you can literally almost walk back through that event where it's recording the people there, what they're doing, they're socializing, they're all around you at tables, and you're literally walking through your own moment in history that you've recorded, uh, let alone the ability to walk through any type of moment that's recorded. And that's why traveling, they had these beautiful going over in Egypt. I was up looking at icebergs, all of these amazing nature areas. Um, I was in Venice at one point. But imagine that that's going to become the new standard. It is. You're going to record things so that 5, 10, 15, 20 years down the road, you can literally walk back through that event taking place in 3D in your headset. Now, this is a $400 headset that I'm using, okay? Now, all of this stuff starts happening. I get Oculus over the weekend for Christmas. Uh, the story comes out that Facebook probably sold a lot of Oculuses because they're high ranking in the App Store. Now it comes out that Apple is making sure that the people are not defecting to Meta because the race is on and they are a big competitor and you can see why. The way that you are hooked on the iPhone, uh, if you have one company that puts out a product that absolutely supersedes any other product on the market and they can corner that market, man, if they own virtual reality. So I'm beginning to understand the race when I walk through how that is. Uh, so to look at Apple, now here's what's even cooler. I said to myself, if I'm so hyped on a $400 headset, which is a lot of money, okay, but it is cool that you don't need a television with it. It's all self-encompassing. You just put on the headset and you put on the hands. And Apple on the other side, to finish up that thought I was talking about coming into the break, this is a high-end product. They thought about coming to it with low-end. They're going to come super high-end in the beginning. Maybe a $6,000 number could be that number. Now, Apple's aiming to include some of its most advanced and powerful chips in the headset. Again, this article from early this year talking about Apple VR AR coming down the line probably next year. Uh, along with displays that are much higher resolution than those in existing VR products. I'm sitting here raving to you, and it is amazing, folks. I'm telling you, that's why it's so cool to think about. Now, the final disclaimer here, okay, is going to be if you're changing the world and you're spending that much money, I don't know when profits are going to come because there's probably a lot of time to invest in the technology it's going to take to make this a perfect product and you almost are probably going to be doing it as in advancing that technology for a considerable period of time until it reaches the maximum point where you basically feel like you're just existing in human life and until they get to that point they're going to be pushing the limits of that technology whether you're wearing suits to feel things like you said whether you can actually taste things i saw something about a headline and um you know it felt like clickbait but people are developing technology that you could even lick and taste uh, a screen of some sort long way to go as you can imagine but point being i can't Im i cannot imagine what higher technology and that's where 8k 16k it's gonna be almost a surreal experience and it kind of is but i can't imagine what the six thousand dollar headset is going to be like if the four hundred dollar headset has blown me away now yeah, Apple originally planned to include less powerful processors and offload much of the work to a hub in a user's home that would wire wirelessly beam the content to the headset. So they were going to have the workhorse be an offload to a hub. But that idea was squashed uh, by Johnny Ive, their design chief. I'm not sure. Is he still there? I don't think he's there anymore, right? This was a January article, as I said. The headset's designed to work as a standalone device, meaning it can operate on a battery rather than being plugged in. That's how Oculus works. Similar to Facebook's latest, as they talk about, Sony requires a PlayStation gaming console. It seems like it might make sense to have some type of console or hub because the technology that's going to take place to be all on your head is probably something that's a little cumbersome and maybe not necessary if you have a little hub next to you. To further reduce the device's weight, Apple's planning to use a fabric exterior. That's a departure from the metal designs Apple's usually looking for. So you're talking about fabric. They got prototypes in there of the headset, some of which are about the size of Oculus Quest. So pretty similar action there for Apple. Now, do they have a picture of it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, that's Facebook's Oculus VR. I have the Oculus 2. There it is. PlayStation VR. That's what PlayStation looks like. But $5,000, $6,000, watch out. Now, 
we jump to a third article they had referenced, this one from late October, so about two months ago. Now I'm talking about Oculus Quest 2 for Facebook, but they're talking about a new high-end Cambria headset. So that is with Facebook, that they are going to have the high-end here. So this is just the beginning, and the beginning is pretty cool, to put it lightly, in terms of how immersive it is. But when I started thinking about, folks, you can talk about educationally, okay? Educationally, kids should have these headsets. You can travel around the world. You can see any spot in the world and feel like you're sitting in the classroom in that place. It's going to happen. I saw it last night for the first time on YouTube VR. The 360-degree 8K videos. Uh, go look them up, folks. Just because the technology alone in that type of deal. And um, so for what it's worth, we'll finish it up when we come back from the market open real briefly, talking about the Cambria headset for Facebook, because same deal. If you're talking about ramping it up, uh, it only goes up from here in terms of what that project can do. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. we got markets open. we got the S&P up almost five points right now at 47.83. You're talking about only 15 points away from the all-time highs, all-time highs uh, yesterday morning at 47.98. So to wrap up this conversation, because the last part of this conversation is pretty cool in terms of where it goes from virtual reality to augmented reality, because it's not all about 
living in cyberspace, which is the metaverse, right? Which is a part of it, like I was just talking about, pretty cool. You take a class to Venice, Italy. Uh, maybe you're taking a world history class and you're sitting in the ruins of Rome and stuff like that. Very something that should probably be happening right now. I mean, if money is no object, and unfortunately uh, it is an object, but some of the best schools out there are going to be spending the technology, and I see no reason why you wouldn't have headsets like that that can walk kids through everywhere, let alone when you get into college and just the social being of it all. But where it gets cooler is, now this is the article talking about Cambria. Now this comes out two months ago, talking about when Facebook changes their name to Meta. They're talking about the new Cambria headset. It would be a premium headset to the Oculus 2 that they have, okay? It's gonna be an upscale offering that sits above the Quest 2 in the company's product line. Over the past couple of years, Facebook pared down its headset line, discontinuing a low-end one, Oculus Go, and a higher-end Oculus that required a PC connection. With the new headset, they're again going, expanding the portfolio. The new model is not going to require a link to the desktop computer, uh, but it is going to be premium uh, in terms of what it's going to be. But it also, uh, let's see, where were they talking about here? Yeah, the device has new sensors, improved displays and optics. I'm telling you, the ones in the Oculus 2 are pretty cool. Uh, the Quest 2, I should say. As well as refined augmented reality capabilities. Uh, the sensors will let people create more virtu more realistic avatars, the virtual rep representation of users, and the so-called pass-through mode. So here's the last part I want to talk about, which lets users see real world through the go goggles will be in color as opposed to black and white. So right now, the goggles... There is a mode that allows you to see through. So you're seeing the external world, okay, as opposed to when you're doing the virtual reality stuff, you're in a black hole that everything is just what you're seeing. But there is a way to see pass through. And what that allows, though, is that it looks like almost like a Terminator lens. Okay, it's black and white. But it can take things and it puts things in the reality that exists. So you're looking at the room you're in. And meanwhile, you're looking at it through these goggles that can add which is the augmentation, the add of things in reality. So it's gonna be potentially augmented reality. And that's why I hear that when you try and wrap your brain around it, folks, because it's an ever-changing technology and it's right at the forefront that I believe it's gonna start becoming mainstream because I got it for Christmas, all right? I'm bringing it over to the in-law's house for Christmas. I'm showing you know, my future father-in-law, right? Showing him it, I'm showing my dad. I'm telling my dad, I'm gonna show him. He's gonna show people. More people are gonna get it. Uh, it's pretty immersive and pretty amazing that it could spread pretty quickly. At $400, it definitely could. At $6,000 a pop, that's gonna take some time, but pretty surreal to imagine it. But augmented reality and virtual reality but i'm telling you you try it and you're going to realize how quickly it's just like a wow experience each person that i give it to to try it it is a wow experience um so meta and apple all right what started this whole segment off and where we're at 9 34 we're almost halfway through the show but i'm telling you these two companies whoever wins this race it would be like the beginning of apple cornering the iphone okay because you're going to begin spending more time in potentially that type of an environment as you add it to your work, to your education, to the ability, like I said, to just see the world, all right? And then you have multiple people in there. You and your family are all sitting at a table, right, in, in the middle of Venice, Italy, hanging out. Um, it's just pretty cool that, that I imagine it's gonna continue to some degree between those two companies. Excuse me, okay. We're over our Facebook and Meta clip, and here's what I'll say. It, it pains me, the last part, to be pumping a company like Facebook and Meta because I think from a social perspective, uh, I don't trust them for a second. And they're, I highly encourage, okay, regardless of which political spectrum you fall on, and the word regulation obviously somehow triggers all the politics, you are going to want some type of regulation in this, folks, when we are spending so much time potentially in a metaverse doing everything um, and having the ability to spend so much time in there that the amount of information they would have, there's no reason why we just can't regulate that maybe we own our information or there's some privacy concerns with that information, et cetera. It's our information, and it's going to be everywhere because the technology is just going to put every single thing online, uh, and we'll leave it at that.
All right, let's jump around to Victoria's Secret. We'll jump to, how about that? As they crush it and continue to crush it, uh, this stock, man, between this stock and Bath & Body Works, which was the original uh, main head company of the two, in terms of the, the parent company, um, they split off Victoria's Secret. They've both just been a rocket ship since about the last year and a half. Shares are rising after the company announced a plan to buy back $250 million in stock. Strong sales over the holidays. Reaffor reaffirmed its forecast for the fiscal fourth quarter. Disclosure, my mom has some. Victoria's Secret and her retirement account. I yeah, thought it was a solid company going back just retirement-wise when it was under the helm that you had Bath and Body Works to support it as well. And there's your pop by about 10% overnight, up to about 54.45 on reaffirming their numbers and putting out some guidance there. We check out the last year. Now, this thing got ahead of itself when it got spun off for sure, up to 76 bucks, up from about 50. We're now above that price when they got spun off. You pull up BBWI, I believe it is. Yeah, Bath and Body Works. This is when you got the spin off. So they dropped from 82 to 65 as they spin off the equity in Victoria's Secret. We're now above that price point for Bath and Body Works at 69 as well. But you take a look at the three-year weekly, and there's all you got to see. We were down at $8 on the COVID lows. You came into 2020 at about $20. This thing accelerated up to 25. That's 25% acceleration early in the year on the news that they had a deal to divest a portion of of Victoria's Secret. That deal ends up falling apart as COVID breaks out. Uh, turns out to be a blessing in disguise. It's the stock they keep, Victoria's Secret, basically cut a lot of the stores, turn it around, spin it off, and that company seems to be doing well. Two, two of them, both doing extremely well. Victoria's Secret, separate company now. Uh, their number's out, and you're going to open at about 60 bucks. So when you look at 60 bucks, we're going to be right at this level that we're at in the middle of November, we'll put it back on a daily, and that's when we're gonna open at about, uh, what is that right? What just happened? No, 55, excuse me. That does include, because the market's open now, excuse me, 55. So we're right back in closing the gap that we had in November for Victoria's Secret. All right, let's check around some of these markets. You get the Russell turning negative on the open, back to a five minute. There's a little bit of a sell-off down, about 12 points from 22.50. S&P is holding, pretty up, holding up pretty well from right where we were coming into the open at 47.84. The NASDAQ 100 up about 18 points. Let's check out some of the FANG stocks. Let's check out Apple. Within about $1.50, the highs yesterday from $3 trillion. We're sitting right at about $180 right now. The number it's got to get to, folks, $182.86. $182.86. So $183 gets it done for $3 trillion for Apple. You got Microsoft shares this morning up two tenths percent. Amazon down one tenth percent, almost two tenths percent. We'll call it. We'll jump over to Facebook or Meta up two tenths percent. We jump to Google shares. Basically a pretty calm day so far. We jump over to Tesla. Tesla flirting with 1100 bucks after trading to 1119 yesterday stay tuned folks we'll come right back after the break Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Stay 
delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Jumping around to some of the companies uh, that really have been taking a beating lately, man, in this market. DocuSign down another 8 tenths percent today. We put it on a 15 minute. You've had a bounce. You were up to 159 early this week, but just like that, you give back another 8 bucks. Uh, Peloton. They're talking about Peloton over on the Tiger's Den. Uh, another day of down 1%. Remarkable. You're talking about a 34 handle. A 34 handle on this equity. We put it back as far as it goes to their IPO. In September of 2019, you're talking about you can be in a losing position on this equity after being in it for over two years and getting almost the full run. I mean, you're talking about now back to prices that we traded at in December of 2019 for Peloton. Are you kidding me with the run that they had being perfectly positioned to sell at home uh, exercise equipment during a pandemic? And just like that. Their share price is worth what it was prior. Uh, now, you jump into the Analyze tab. You jump over to the Fundamentals. Right now, you're talking about a company still valued at $11.5 billion. So, yeah, there's a lot of valuation there still. But, man, quite a haircut when you're talking about basically getting quartered. Not basically. Even worse than that. It's almost 20% of what the value was. Yeah, about 20%. You get an 80% haircut on Peloton shares. Never think you know more than the market, folks. That stock, I mean, it was up there. It was up over 100. Look how long it was up over 100. There are a lot of people in big time losing positions in this as it was trading over 100 from October. Yes, you had a dip back here in May, but basically through to October for a whole year, this thing was trading at over 100 bucks. And right now you're at 34.64. And as I'm talking, it's not stopping. Look at this. You're continuing to drop right now, putting it even on a minute basis. Since I started talking about it, you dropped another 50 cents, which in this stock is almost a full percent right now um, to 34.60, down 1.5 percent with the market positive. Uh, DocuSign, as I talked about as well, same deal, down 1.2 percent right now. Zoom shares down three quarters of percent. Let's jump around to some of the travel stocks. American Airlines right now down 1.75 percent. You got Delta Airlines down a percent right now. United Airlines down 1.4. Norwegian Cruise Lines, not so fast. Trading lower as well, down 2.2. Carnival down 2.2 as well. It's interesting you had these popping yesterday with the news that's been going on with the cruise ships, et cetera, in terms of the outbreaks potentially on cruises. Uh, nonetheless, pulling back today, putting this on the daily. We've just had quite a run up, so not surprising that we give back some of that. But, geez, these companies well off where we've been previously as well for Carnival and the airlines. Let's jump to Boeing real quick. Boeing, putting Boeing on a three-year weekly for some context here. Yeah, cannot find a bid at all. We were in a channel line. That channel line, though, we break out of it. We come back. We test the channel line. We trade lower. We're sitting at 203 right now on Boeing shares. Another company I like to take a look at for travel-wise, Airbnb. Uh, Airbnb, 
168.03, you're down a percent for Airbnb as well today. Talk about some volatility in this company and just taking a look here, the full run, looking on a Fibonacci number, how far we made it back. Yeah, more than the 618 of that full move, almost the 786 of the move. It started back in July up to 213 or so, which traded 168 for Airbnb. All right, jumping down to some of the other companies, we got CalMain out with their numbers, Calm. Didn't even realize many that there's many companies out with their numbers still in this holiday week. Is that out with their numbers? Yeah, out with their numbers on December 29th, uh, trading lower from 38.45 down to 35.53. Now they two cents a share, well short of the 30 cents estimate. That's their miss there on earnings. They basically make nothing, and they were supposed to make 30 cents. Sales were better than expected, but the bottom line was hit by. Higher costs for packaging and labor. Uh, and as they say, down lower. Higher costs. Watch out, folks. They were not able to pass them on. And uh, they're the nation's largest egg producer. Interesting, because eggs, food prices rising so fast. And the company can't even keep up. Prices are going up. They're just not going up fast enough to keep up with how ridiculous the pricing is for packaging and labor to get the products out. You have... Tesla, only in the world of Tesla, can it rise 1.4% after Elon sells another billion dollars worth of stock. But nonetheless, that's basically what happened. He may be at the end of that. I thought he already signaled he was at the end, right? Nonetheless, in the story of Elon Musk, he sells more shares and the stock goes up more. Tesla flirting with about 1100 bucks, I believe. We were looking at it earlier. So down a bit now, down half a percent at 1,082 for Tesla shares. Alibaba, they might sell 30% of its stake in social media advertising company Weibo to state-owned Shanghai Media Group. Good old state-owned media group getting in on the action. Um, Alibaba down a bit. Watch out for those China companies, folks, I talk about all the time. There you go. Alibaba down another 2.2%. I've talked about this many times. There's some context for you. You want to try and catch a, a low on Alibaba? Good luck. You're down another 2% today. You're pushing these lows at 108.70 uh, that we got. And you you see the volume we got that low, folks? Right? November 29th, 185 million shares. Since we've been above that price point, as we've come into the holidays, you got 142 million, 100 million, 84 million. And this week, we're at 37 million so far. Uh Watch out for that one. I think we have some Diddy news as well. Diddy's down 2.6% as well. The Chinese ride-hailing company will use the listing by introduction method to list in Hong Kong as it moves to delist in New York. Just a nonstop news flow of how China is not the China that we knew six months ago in terms of investing, folks. Diddy's delist in New York, and they're going in Hong Kong, and uh, they continue to go down. Look at that chart. You're talking about within literally pennies of all-time lows on Diddy as they had gone public. All right, BioNTech, they're down a little bit lower. Seven days they've been falling. Uh, rival vaccine maker Moderna's in a similar slump, falling for the past six. Looks like they peaked out when we had peak uh, Omicron scare, mRNA. Yeah, we trade up to on November 17th, 307, but there it was. It sure was peak Omicron scare. And you're trading these vaccine makers, especially Moderna, with the volatility it has. Remember, from 274 to 376, over basically from Thanksgiving, the Thursday to the Friday to the Monday. And then just like that, you give it back from Moderna shares. BioNTech, no, BNTX is their symbol, I believe. Yeah, pretty much the same exact action. You jump from 300 up to 374, and since then we're back to 234.55. Man, the volatility on these companies. Look at that chart. I mean, there's nothing to say this thing doesn't come back down a little bit further. Maybe you're talking about 207. You know, it could potentially. We're talking about a low here. Let's see where the low is back in October. 232. 230, 230.03, so maybe 230 is a number for BioNTech if you're looking for a number, but I would be careful there. Anytime you get a nice double top like that, we've come back, but you've almost given it all back. You're talking about exactly it all back, cut in half from 464 to 235. Let's check out Pfizer. Yeah, quite a different story for Pfizer. Remarkable. I mean, you just traded from 40 bucks up to 57 since October 14th. Pretty marginal pullback there. Now, if this is, let's take this one off here, okay? Because this is a potential ABC when you got from 41 to about 55. So you're talking about 14 bucks. Yeah, that almost took it up to 61. That took it about 64, 63 or 64. 
you might have an ABC within an ABC because then you go from 51 to 61. If you 61 could become your B point, 50 could become your A point. All right, folks, stay tuned. We get the S&P's up eight points right now, 47.86. We're within about 12 points of all-time highs. We got a high print today of 47.91. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be right back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up 11 points right now. You're within about nine points of all-time highs. We could get a high right now in the S&Ps. You're talking about within nine points of that territory. When you back things up on the NASDAQ 100, we're talking about within 250 points. That's about 1.5% away from all-time highs. You check out the Dow right now, 36,394. The Dow we're pushing 50 points, folks, 50. We might get 36,500 for the first time in the futures today. The Russell far off that level, uh, as we talk about many times, more than 217 points right now away from that price level. Sad news yesterday, the passing of John Madden, uh, quite a man in football, to put it lightly. Some interesting stats out there that I was looking at in terms of he retired as a coach at the age of 42, and that was after coaching for, I believe, 10 years for the Raiders. Uh, he went to the AFC title game seven times, won a Super Bowl following the 1976 season. But imagine, folks, a coach by the age of 42 right now 
winning a Super Bowl, being in the AFC Championship seven times, and quitting the game. Quitting the game in terms of coaching, but as we all know now, uh, went on to be quite a broadcaster. You have Madden, uh, Madden NFL football, one of the most successful sports games. Man, the amount of times I played Madden, Madden became synonymous with many, many, um, many games just putting it lately reading in the youtube tigers and they're talking about it as well but yeah remarkable uh 42 years old he had retired uh, a little bit before my time when he did retire but that was the 76 season was the super bowl uh he retires he goes on to win 16 emmy awards for outstanding sports analyst per- personality 11 super bowls for four networks from 1979 to 2009 so yeah i was born in 1980 1980s child just missed it uh, but pretty cool started his broadcasting career at cbs uh had a fear of flying if you want to wear he actually traveled to every game by bus they had that mad bus always out there for monday night football unfortunately he passed away yesterday stay tuned folks we got our man basil chapman he's coming up next with the tiger technicians hour we have fast market coming up at 12 uh Yes, our man Larry Pesvento is on vacation, but we got our man Steve Rhodes. He is back live today at 1 o'clock. Tom O'Brien, my dad, he is live at 3 o'clock. Stay tuned, folks. We'll have live programming today. Have a great Wednesday, everybody.